Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review, and today I'm very excited to check it out Obelisk! This is for one to four players. Age is 12 plus, it'll take about 30 minutes to play. And Obelisk is another game in my Bower Spotlights series, where the Game Crafter has me look at one specific game each month, and I take a real deep dive into that game. Now, I do want to mention right from the offset, they pay me to do that segment. The unboxing, the gameplay, the reviews, the whole nine yards. So this is technically a written review, but I assure you that that is not going to impact my impression or my opinion that I'm going to give you on the game, but I did want to let you know that in advance. So in Obelisk, this is a game in which you are going to be working cooperatively to try and stop these crazy looking demon things from invading your world. And how you're going to do that is by uh, taking turns and doing a couple actions each turn. And the actions are going to have you uh, manipulating the path the demons are going to take, trying to just keep them uh, moving as long as you can, building obelisks that uh, you'll upgrade slowly, and those will allow you to destroy different demons. And then you can mine those demons' dead bodies in order to upgrade your obelisk even more. And it's all completely cooperative. The game also comes with some expansion cards built in there, some scrolls that really mix things up, and I'll talk more about that in the pros and cons. Now, normally I would be talk I'd have it all set up down here, but I've done three videos already, so we're just gonna get straight into the opinion. So let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First on the con side, the game's not gonna be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. And I think the biggest reason is this is completely cooperative. And it does just feel like you're trying to figure out a big puzzle. And that is the biggest con that I have this game with a bullet. If you do not like puzzly style games, puzzly cooperative games, where really you could play it solo the same way you could play it as four players because it's just all about trying to figure out what is the optimal decision. Uh, that's another con that I think a lot of people are going to have with this game is that if you think this game out long enough, you can figure out pretty much what the ideal decision to do each move is. And I think that's going to be a turnoff to some people. Now, uh, luckily, they do have some variants, which I'll talk more about in the pros, but at its core face value and just the base game, I think that's a big, big issue some people are going to have with this game. Uh, another comment I have this game, an odd component issue is actually with the upgraded components, which are these cool little uh, like acrylic tokens you get right here. And they said we're nice enough to send these as part of the review. Uh, but the base game comes with just generic cubes. I mean, they're nice looking cubes, but generic cubes. And actually, these take up more space on the cards than the cubes do, and the cubes are transparent. And I actually uh, thought it was a little bit easier to learn how to play the game with the cubes as opposed to these. It's a minor nitpick, uh, because, I mean, this just represents green, the blue one just represents blue, so it's pretty easy to figure out where everything is, but it is still something I did want to mention. Any other cons that I have with the game? Um... I, I personally liked it best with one of the variants, so I would say I think, well, we'll talk more about that in the pros. I think that's actually a pro. Uh, any other cons? No, I think the biggest con they have to know is this is cooperative. This is a very uh, puzzly game in which you're pretty much just all trying to work together to solve the puzzle. If those are games you do not like, this is not a game I can recommend for you. But if you do like those styles of games, I can absolutely rec recommend Obelisk. I really enjoy this game. And I can't really think of another game that it reminds me of, which is something that I want to start off with, because I really do like when games do that. Another thing I really loved about this game is I brought it into my classroom, I taught it to a couple eight-year-old girls, and they enjoyed it, and they we had fun. It was a fun game. Then I played it on my game night, we enjoyed it, we had fun. Uh, I played it solo, I enjoyed it, I had fun. I, I just think it's a rock-solid game. But what I really like about this game is the amount of variability that's in the game with both the scrolls that you can mix in, which I would recommend after you've played a couple games, but also some of the variants. Now, there is one where it's like... Because it, one of the big issues that they have with this game... Oh, that's another con that I have with this game. Uh, and I want to rewind real quick. Is that if you have someone in your group who uh, is the person who constantly takes the lead and maybe says, oh, I think this is the best move, and this is the best move, and this is the best move... Um, you're going to want to tell that person to chill out because, yes, they might have found the best move. Like, it's not, like, arguable, like, well, actually, I think this is a better move. They might have found the move that is the best move, most likely. And if they're really good at doing that, they can kind of just completely take over the game and make it not fun for other people. Uh, so you need to make sure that if there is someone like that in your group, that you tell them to chill out before you play or mix in one of the variant rules that they have. Uh, my personal favorite one, and my favorite game that I played of this was actually a four-player game of it, uh, in which we use the rule where you only have a minute timer for each of the phases, uh, for, for the Demon Knight phase. Because in that Demon Knight phase, you make three choices, which sounds 
easy, right? At the beginning of the game, it is easy. You got a couple here, a couple there, a yellow here, a green one. You're like, oh, I'll, I'll take care of that green one later. But then it starts to get more and more and more stressful as you're like, oh, oh, shoot, he's going to reach into the pad. So I'm actually going to have to use one of the actions to extend my pad, move this and move that. And I need to upgrade this obelisk. But, oh, I can't capture this thing here because it has the negative one. And it gets really frustrating. And when you combine that into only being a minute long, it becomes super stressful. And I really like that. I thought that was a whole heck of a lot of fun. Now, that being said, I absolutely know that's not everybody's cup of tea. Um, that is 100% going to ruin this game for some people. But if you are one of those people like me who loves just the, the stress of the time situation, I think this is a game that you absolutely want to check out. Uh, and, and I can say that emphatically, especially if you are a solo gamer. And that's another thing. I also played a solo game with that one minute rule and that was stressful. It also sped up the game a good deal, which was awesome as well. Um, but in the end, I like the variants, I like the scrolls, I like the gameplay, I like puzzly games, and I enjoyed this game, and this one is actually going to stay in my collection. I thought the um, the, the use of the box was as well. I like how they did that. Uh, artwork, eh, neither here nor there. That's a subjective thing. Not personally my cup of tea. Uh, lack of a theme. Oh, that's another con uh, that I think some people are going to have. Um, lack of a theme. It's a very abstract -y game, and that's another thing that you need to know. The theme is just enough there that I kind of got into it. It's like I'm trying to destroy these monsters. Uh, it didn't just feel like I was destroying cubes. But then again, that's a solid point. Man, I, I need to back it up some more with the cons. I'm wondering if I got slightly more immersed into the game because I had these, which made me think of them as monsters as opposed to cubes. So let me know in the comments below. What do you think about that? Does that get you more immersed into a game, having a piece like this as opposed to a cube? I've, I, I definitely think it does for me, but let me know in the comments below. Anywho, that is Obelisk, an easy game to recommend if you're a fan of puzzly games or cooperative games or <laughs> stressful real-time games, if you want to use that variant. Uh, one I really did enjoy, and I think I'm going to be keeping it on for quite a good while. If you're enjoying what I'm doing, oh, if you want to check this out, be sure to click on that Game Crafter link down below. If you're enjoying what I'm doing, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. If you want to support the channel, consider... Uh, click it on the Amazon Associates link down below or checking out the Patreon. It helps make my audio, video, all that sort of things better. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.